Hey everyone, welcome back. There's been a lot of people talking about dog whistles recently, with a lot of the discussion revolving around either the Florida State Board of Education's new African American History Standards that I talked about in my last video, or Jason Haldean's new song. Now, dog whistles are nothing new in American politics, but since it's in the public consciousness, I thought that this would be a good opportunity to talk about what dog whistles are, why people use them, and how those of us who aren't supposed to hear those messages can learn to recognize them. So, what is a dog whistle? Essentially, it is a form of coded language where someone will say something that sounds completely normal, but has a hidden message that is only understood by a specific audience. And generally, this has a negative connotation where that hidden message is based on some form of bigotry, be that racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, anti-LGBTQ sentiment, etc. And the best way to illustrate this is by an example. Now, before I give this example, I want you all to know that I am not a neo-Nazi, but I have done a small study of neo-Nazis. With that being said, let's say that we're talking about current events. And I say something like, you know, we really need to go back to 88 to deal with these globalists. Now, that doesn't sound particularly hateful. Maybe I'm talking about going back to the policies of 1988. The world was a little less interconnected, the economy was a little less global, the U.S. was a little bit more self-sufficient when it came to its domestic economy. It sounds reasonable. What I actually said was, we need a second holocaust. And I know for those of you who didn't catch that, that's probably pretty shocking. So let's break it down. The first part, 88. Now this is actually one that I had forgotten about until I was reminded of it recently, and 88 stands for Heil Hitler. H is the eighth letter of the alphabet. So Heil begins with H, Hitler begins with H, 88. And this is a convenient way for neo-Nazis to talk to each other to figure out if you are also a neo-Nazi. Moving on to the second part where I talk about globalists, globalists is a broadly understood dog whistle where globalist means Jew. So when I say that we need to go back to 88 to deal with the globalists, I'm saying we need to go back to the policies of Hitler <laughs> to deal with the Jews aka calling for a second holocaust. But if you don't know that I meant that by either being a neo-Nazi or studying neo-Nazis like I have, you might have assumed that I was taking a reasonable position. And that's how dog whistles are supposed to work. You heard one thing, but I was testing you to see if you were someone that I could talk to about what I really mean. Now the reason that people use dog whistles is to avoid the social consequences of being a bigot. The vast majority of people aren't going to be very comfortable with someone being, say, openly anti-Semitic or racist. So if someone is going around saying that Jewish space lasers start wildfires or using the n-word prolifically, people are going to push back on that. So instead, these bigots use dog whistles to give themselves plausible deniability. And there are a couple of different ways they can go about that. For example, if we go back to the example I started with, where two people are having a conversation and one makes a comment about 88 and the globalists, if the other person responds, yeah, well, if that happens, the gas bill is going to go up, or I might have to build a bigger shower if we do that, they now both know that, oh, we're, we're both neo-Nazis. We can now be more open about talking about our neo-Nazi beliefs. But... If the other person responds with, oh, well, what was it going on in 1988 policy that you think would help us in the current moment? Now our neo-Nazi is like, oh, this person doesn't know, probably shouldn't be talking about neo-Nazi stuff, as that's probably going to get me in trouble. Now, when it comes to politicians, they're trying to avoid losing votes. And I think the use of dog whistles in politics is best summed up by Lee Atwater, who was a Republican strategist that helped Richard Nixon develop the Southern strategy. Now, I'm not going to read through the full quote because it is fairly long and somewhat racist, but I will leave it down in the video description if you want to read it in full. But to summarize, he essentially said that you could use the N-word in campaigns in the 50s and you'd be okay. But now that it's 1968, you can't say that anymore. We will get a lot of pushback. But instead, if we talk about things like forced busing and states' rights, well... More moderate voters will say, oh, I don't see anything explicitly racist, and as long as they're leaning conservative, they might vote for Nixon. But for people in the South who are looking for a politician that wants to implement policies that will disproportionately harm African Americans, they're going to hear that and go, ah, he's talking about those N-word. I'll also vote for Nixon. 
And it's that dual message and plausible deniability that allows Nixon to get votes from both bigots and non-bigots. And this is something the Republican Party is doing to this day. They are well aware that they get a lot of support from hate-based organizations like neo-Nazis, the Klan, and other white supremacists. So they know that they have to do at least some messaging that services those groups so that they will come out to vote for them in both primary and general elections. But the Republican Party also knows that it's moderate and independent voters that decide key swing state elections, so they can't openly support these groups because that will cost them the votes that they need to actually hold power. So they have to do this delicate balancing act where they use dog whistles to tell their more bigoted supporters that, hey, we're still supporting you, even if we don't openly say it. But don't worry, once we get into power, we'll take care of you. Now that we've talked about what dog whistles are and why people might use them, the last thing I wanted to discuss is how those of us who aren't supposed to hear dog whistles can learn to recognize these coded messages in order to hold people accountable. And the first thing we can do is a little bit of internet research. There's a lot of resources out there from groups like the Anti-Defamation League and the Southern Poverty Law Center where you can look up commonly used hate speech or dog whistles so that you have a general understanding of the types of things you might want to listen for in the future. Additionally, if you hear something that just sounds out of place or you hear someone say, that's a dog whistle and you're not quite sure, throw it in Google and see what comes up. Now, obviously it's the internet, so don't trust everything you read and vet your sources, but it's a good starting point to understanding the types of language that these people use. And like any code, once the code is broken, a new code will emerge, so it is something you kind of have to keep up on. But if you keep doing a little research and keep yourself generally well informed, you should be able to spot the fundamentals of some of the most common dog whistles out there. The other important thing to look at when determining whether something is a dog whistle or not is the context. For example, if a little kid comes up to me and says, my favorite number is 88, I'm probably not going to think too much of it. It might be the jersey number of his favorite athlete, they might just like the way the number looks, I don't know. But I'm not going to inherently assume that they're a neo-Nazi, they're a little kid. However, if I see an adult with a tattoo of the number 88 in a gothic font over an iron cross, now we're getting some context clues that that might be the 88 that means Heil Hitler, and that's probably not someone I want to associate with. For a real-world example, let's look at Jason Aldean's new song, Try That in a Small Town. Now, if you read through the lyrics, there's nothing in there that's explicitly racist, although the overall theme does seem to be that small towns are broadly intolerant of anyone who violates their social norms and expectations. And if you do end up violating those norms by engaging in constitutionally protected speech, they're going to respond with physical violence and vigilantism to put you in your place. Now, this isn't a great message, but it's not racist yet. But when we look at it in the context of the music video and other promotional material, that racial overtone comes through. The music video prominently features a Tennessee courthouse, which was the site of a number of infamous lynchings. And when they go to talk about violence against police, they claim that they're exclusively using footage of news events that revolve around the Black Lives Matter protests, when in fact they're using a lot of stock footage from foreign countries. They also could have used uh, January 6th footage if they wanted to talk about people attacking the police, but that doesn't really seem to have fit with their overall message, does it? And the last place where it gets the most explicit is actually in their TikTok promotion, where they show a clipping of a news article where a journalist was run out of a small town for calling out that town's racism and bigotry. And when you look at the lyrics in the context of these other elements of the video and other promotional materials, the song probably should have been titled, Try That in a Sundown Town instead. Hopefully this video helped you all learn a little bit more about what dog whistles are, why people use them, and how to spot them. Because at the end of the day, the bigots and those who are seeking their support aren't going anywhere, and they're going to continue to find new and creative ways to covertly express their true beliefs. So it's up to the rest of us to keep informed as to what the dog whistles they're currently using are, so that we can hold people accountable for not only what they say, but what they truly mean. Think about it.